Hereford Academy is a school that has recently seen dramatic improvement in its results. From 33% to 74% A star to C in just three years. The empowerment of its staff to become leaders for learning has been a central plank of that improvement. And not just the teachers, the teaching assistants as well, referred to here as learning support workers. Beautiful artwork. We refer to teaching assistants as learning support workers because we feel that they support the learning of the pupil and not assist the teachers. And we're quite passionate about that. One of the aspects of transforming the school over the last five years has been a really about ensuring that students are catered for, that every student's learning style and ability is um, planned for and given opportunity to develop. And so learning support workers are crucial in ensuring that that actually happens. How's it going? Fine, then. We're just getting ready. Chris Atkinson is the Senko and Head of Learning Support at the Academy. Oh, right. Currently we have around about 20 learning support workers and I am responsible for their deployment across the curriculum. Some of them are attached to statemented pupils, others to particular departments. Some will focus specifically on cohorts of problem pupils or become expert at literacy or numeracy interventions. The Academy wanted to have an area dedicated to the work of the learning support workers. The problem was finding free space. What do you feel? We actually used four temporary classrooms that we did have in existence. And by rejigging the timetable and ensuring those rooms became freed up, we actually used the existing classroom space to, to provide the learning zone in its current form. These temporary buildings have become the central location for literacy and numeracy interventions. All right, Scott, how's Sadie getting on? Getting on quite good. Because she's changed this book now, haven't you? <laughs> with over two-thirds of pupils arriving with reading ages two years below their chronological ages, they are kept busy. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Chris. What are you doing? What happens here is we only have small groups coming into the learning zone. Sometimes it could just be one pupil, one to who needs quite a, a wave three, an intensive intervention, which if you employed a teacher to, to do that would be too expensive. But the learning support workers that are attached to the intervention zone, they are very experienced with helping children who have additional needs. Teachers have a lot of people in the class, and so it's more hard to focus on one person, whereas the learning support people, they just have a few, and it's easier to talk one-to-one. -one. The team uses the five R's as a formula for success for both their students and their own development. Readiness means to me to be prepared for the intervention that I'm going to deliver, to have all my resources ready and at hand, to know the pupils that I've got coming and to be ready myself. Are you enjoying that book? Good girl, well done. Thank you, Andrew. Readiness in terms of how we expect that to be demonstrated by learning support workers is key in terms, for example, of how learning support workers need to be aware of the students that they're having to work with and support. And by that I mean knowing where students currently are at and where they need to be in terms of targets so they're able to prepare appropriately for students to succeed. Secondly, that the learning support workers are in themselves ready and up for the challenge of leading intervention uh, across the academy. And finally, that as a learning zone and as an academy, we prepare those people in terms of uh, professional support and development so that they are up and prepared for the job in itself. What I'll do is I'll create the lesson details and I'll get them all out to you. We'll trial it for about a week and get together just to check that the headings are right. The learning support workers are a resource and you need to get the, whatever resource you have, you need to get the best out of it. And if you develop them professionally and empower them, it all moves on to the pupils, and in the end, that's what we want. But if you're empowering people, you've got to obviously give them the support and what they need, and you've got to give them that support in terms of developing them as professionals. And therefore, developing these people to the highest possible levels is something that we invest in greatly. Our head teacher encourages us all to develop ourselves the same way as teachers are, because we are an integral part of the school and a very vital part of the support team. If you've got a happy LSW who's happy with their job, happy with their role, confident in their role because they've been on professional development courses, they're, they're going to be happy, they're going to be confident and they're going to be willing to try things. It gives you a positive attitude, I think, because you feel that you're, what you're doing is valuable 
and that they're putting time and effort into you. Helen Parry's continuing professional development has equipped her with the skills to help with a broad range of vocational lessons. I do strange jobs in that I don't just work in what you class as a normal classroom. I work in construction with the boys and then with the girls I do uh, um, health and beauty. So I do manicures, facials, eyelash perming, eyelash tinting, that sort of thing. I think I've done five courses since I started in um, September 2007. And it's brilliant because it just means that we get more knowledge and more information. And then once we've got that, we can then pass that on to the students. Yeah, I think just, just add a little bit more water, not much. The instructor can't be everywhere. And you've got, when you've got that sort of practical work going on, you know, you've got someone doing plastering. And if they get stuck and they don't know what to do, you know, they're just going to be a bit disheartened. They just need you there to just, OK, come on, you know, help, help with that. Our learning support workers are extremely resourceful. They'll often take resources into mainstream lessons or down here in the intervention zone. They're fantastic at gathering resources together. We share our own ideas and opinions just naturally as part of the job. Um, there's not a day where if I have a question or a triumph or a, a, a failure that I want to share to get support on, there isn't at least six people I can go to within five minutes. It's really encouraged within our department that we always communicate. I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare. I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare. And affirm the Sarah Jane Jeffrey was keen to stretch the skills of the gifted and talented children, so entered them for a mock trial competition. But there were problems to be overcome. To resource these lessons, we came from a very, very level playing field, knowing nothing about the British legal system. So part of that was researching resources and also using the resources provided for us by the Citizenship Foundation. So I looked into those and how we could adapt them to our lessons. Have you ever been in trouble before? No. OK, thank you. I've learned for the questions. I now pass on to my learners for a learning support worker works with all sorts of people, because in this mock trial right now, there's people that find things difficult, but people that are really excelling. OK, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. It means that I can learn new things, which I think is very, very important in any work environment, that we, we constantly are learning as professionals, and this has been a wonderful learning opportunity for me. Resourcefulness at this school is all about taking risks. Because you, I think you need to take a risk, especially in, in the learning support department. And we try lots of different interventions. And if we buy something in and it doesn't work, it's not worth us just carrying on and slogging it out with it. We ditch it. We as learning support workers have that opportunity to sit one-to-one -one with the pupils so we can get to know them and we can build those relationships, letting them know that we aren't going to judge them and that we'll be fair with them and let them take a risk. And if they fail, it doesn't matter. So we just did the tiniest bit for each name. The thing that I find the most important is to find out what makes each student tick. Once they know that you're easy to talk to, they'll work much better for you. When they ask you to do something, it's a bit different to when a teacher does. I feel a bit more like more relaxed. Friendly and feel more relaxed more about doing it, and you end up doing it like probably a lot better. Yeah. The learning zone has become the focus of many of the pupils' social lives at the school. Well, they come in where they know it's going to be safe. They know they can then go to breakfast and have the breakfast and come to us, or they come to us then go and have breakfast. It's somewhere nice and safe for them to hang out because they don't necessarily want to be at home on their own. We have got huge social problems in the community, but they're the ones that need the, the, the TLC. And they don't want TLC from somebody who hasn't got a clue what they're on about. Turn. They come to pee, there's a buzz. They, they're smiling, whereas perhaps they're not like that when they come out of a lesson, out of a classroom. So I think it gives them a release. That's real cheeky. It gets rid of that energy that they've been feeling all day. Oh, yes, we have to discipline and you, you want the respect and you want the discipline, but you've got that bit more time. Oh, well done! And an example, a child's having a really, really bad day. You might be able to take them off and have a cup of tea. I'm not the best in school, and uh, she's got me out of a few sticky situations, really, when I needed to calm down or something, and she's been able to calm me down 
whereas other teachers would be getting in my face because I was getting a bit wound up and she'd be there just to calm me down. You might just sit down on a step where you are, but because you haven't got to teach the next lesson, you can go into the lesson and say, oh, I'm ever so sorry, I'm sorry I'm five or ten minutes late, I've had a problem with a pupil. Well, we all get our days, don't we? I think we all get our days, and any TA who says they does, and I think would be telling a little white lie, that you sometimes you think, I really can't get this child. I, I can't get them. I've lost them. You know, what can I do to bring them back, get them on track? And I think you've got to be resilient. Some of our pupils can be quite difficult, and or if they're, there could be pupils that are having learning problems that are really hard to support, and when you're supporting a pupil with difficulties, you need somebody to chat to and find out what resources or what strategies they might use. So if one of the LSWs is having a really bad day, they know that they can get together with another person or they can come and see um, one of the HLTAs or myself or a member of staff and try and find a different strategy which would help support the child. Put on there as well. What sort of energy is <laughs> moving it at when? What type of energy gets it from the bottom of the roller coaster right up to the top? It's where the belt is. Gravitation. What's that say? Ooh, not quite. Oh, right, right. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. No. Electrical. Yes. Electrical. Bargain. What makes it move? Sara Vasey works with disaffected pupils at Key Stage 4. Some of them do put up tremendously large barriers and emotional barriers and don't talk to me, don't listen to me, and, and I hate you, school's rubbish. They put up all these barriers and I just chip away and, and get, find my way in with them and eventually, nine times out of ten, they'll, they'll let me in and they'll let me help them. All of the LSWs complete um, lesson details where they can reflect on the lessons they've either supported or the interventions that they've given. Those details come back to us and we can have a look. Mm. Really, really well. It's very nice to feel so supported, but also to feel accountable, because then if you are encountering any difficulties, that can be looked at and support measures can be put in place. But also, when you see, you see your successes very clearly when they're recorded on a regular basis. And sometimes they can creep up on you. If you didn't have that regular recording of what you've done, you may not realise the success that lurks beneath it. If you want to get the best out of your TAs, you need to have an action plan. You need to know what you want, where you want to go, and how much it's going to cost, because it's all about money as well in the end. So you, but you need to should be able to show your head teacher or your director of strategy what the impact will be at the end, and then you can have that conversation. I would say to schools that are using learning support workers in a very narrow classroom-based sense that they're missing a great opportunity to use an absolutely fantastic resource in terms of how they can support learners more effectively. Yeah.